and I'm just like, you are f***ing kidding. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Twice. You f***ing idiot. Uh, was that a, a much bigger you f***ing idiot than any other moment that you've had? Absolutely. Because it was the, the, it the, was the meaning of yes. this watch. Right. I had always struggled with alcohol. The situations that I was finding myself in with drinking was, was escalating bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was in that moment I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. And I was just, I was in tears. It was just this awful, horrible, dark cloud, just storm, just like. And maybe because two children, there is now oh, a new yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to About Effing Time. I'm Andrew. I'm Adrian. I'm George. I didn't know we were doing this. Who the hell are Sugar you? Are you? <laughs> I'm an imposter. <laughs> now, I'm Marcus. I'm Marcus, and I'm normally behind that camera that I'm pointing at right now. I was, but, I was about to say exactly that. Introduce yourself. Why are you here, sir? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> I've been with these boys ever since the beginning. And uh, this is the third time that we've been in the hive, which is great, but it's the first time that I've been sitting yes. at the table. If we were going to get a teen tattoo, yeah. do you know what I would like it to say? Take top motherfucker. I, I would like it to say that. <laughs> I would, there's something else that I say a lot that I think annoys both of you, actually. Just talking? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the love is real. The love is real. Oh, I'm just as a man. I'm so pleased we're together. It's like yeah. it's like. It's... Okay, no, no. It's it's no pre-talking. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, 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 Every yeah. time we start to say something interesting, I say no, no pre-talking, and yeah. everyone's just like, oh, Andrew. And we sit in silence. We sit. <laughs> a we're in a cone hot, of silence. Very hostile yeah. silence. So Marcus started talking about a story, yes. and yeah. I just immediately went ah. That's that's no, something. Cool. PT. So we didn't pre-talk it much, but I think I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue as to what this story is about when I say let's do a wrist check, starting with George going this yes. way. Yes. Boom! Oh, Look, I got well. it. All Drink, rest. everyone. Let's get it off the wrist. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to Let's my. This is gorgeous. Yeah. So this is a fragment, limited edition Tag Heuer um, uh, Carrera. Um, so this is Hiroshi Fujiwara from uh, Fragment. I, and this, this for me is one of those grail limited edition modern watches. Anyway, Lovely. sorry, I'm, enough, enough on a Hoyer. Uh, proper watch, so I'm wearing a <laughs> Running <laughs> Explorer 2. <laughs> Fucking Jack Nathan strap. Yeah. I love that Marcus is yawning for this yeah, exactly. one. <laughs> I like the strap. <laughs> Okay, well, you guys have been trying to see yeah, what I'm wearing. Trying to figure out what you've got on the wrist. I'm wearing a long sleeve t shirt for a reason, not because I have a drug habit, but because. <laughs> I, yeah, not just because. You, you heard have it a drug first. <laughs> that was not phrased very well. My English teacher's like, you know what you just did there? I am wearing. Hello. What the, is it? Oh, this is the one. This is the watch from the Voice. Dark Secrets episode. This is the watch that I designed. Oh, no way. No way. All right, go, let's, no get off. let's get it off. Let's get it off. Let's have a look. So here it is. So it, if you if you were sleeping through that episode, it, which I'd be surprised because it was quite a, a hot Punchy. one. The We all came with our darkest secrets. And my darkest secret was I got this watch quite far into production. It's called the Hustle Watch. Uh, it has TikTok uh, Mother Effa written on the back, and this is years before um, About Effing Time started. So it's interesting that this phrase it had just another says, life. It actually just says TikTok on the back. But anyway, uh, we can get a marker and add it. Yeah, that, that's obviously a production <laughs> error. But uh, no, this watch was the one that uh, I decided to. Uh, not progress, partly because the bezel doesn't turn anymore. But uh, yep, yeah, that's the watch from the Dark Secrets episode. That's cool. Uh, but it is time to throw it away, George. Please actually throw it away because it? I have a backup watch. Really? Oh, okay, you no, do. We're not going to smash it because I, no, I just no, no, feel. It's part of the story. It's good. It, yes, yeah, it yeah. is part of the story. But I'm going to put on uh, my backup is a, a little bolder. Yeah, that's Avengers. cool. Yeah, so, no, I'm sure that's in your uh, in your really case, cool. and I was just Which like, just the, probably the most affordable titanium automatic watch. What? What's on Yeah, your Marcus, what, what, let's do your wrist check. Here we go. You got a big one? Are you ready? Yeah. Ta-da! 
Right. Interesting. So, but, this is a watch podcast. There's no watch on my wrist for a reason, and there's a story attached to this reason. Or yeah, there's a story which I'm going to unravel now, and it's Ooh, very, yeah. very tied up with about everything time. So, firstly, where is your watch? It's been stolen. Right. What? Yeah. Right. Okay. Twice. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I, I'm not saying an actual the watch. watch was stolen once and I got it back and then it was stolen again. The first watch got stolen. I bought it again and that just got stolen in July of this year. Mm, that's painful. Right. Yeah. But uh, there's, a, it's, it's a, there's, a, there's a big story behind it and actually the, the theft of this watch actually has changed my life significantly. Wow. So... Well, what, what is a watch? Yeah, and, and I, what, I'm, what, what, I'm curious about the watch. What is a watch and what did okay, you originally yeah, cool. buy it? So the watch that I originally, and it was my very first big boy watch, was a Tudor Black Bay S&G. And this was as a result, so the backstory is between Andrew and I have been working together for uh, 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, about that. Decade. In, yep, in, in the watch world. And it was through Andrew that really made me deep dive into watches. I also in saved Marcus from the ugliest collection I have ever laid eyes on in my life. And we must cut away to this. There are watches made of wood. There are oh, watches, no. there, <laughs> there is every abomination. Marcus just gravitated to all of them. <laughs> it was quite, you know, do you remember that? There's, there's footage of Arnold Schwarzenegger opening a, a watch box of his own, of, of these watches. That's the only collection that rivals yours for ugly. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Well, so I, I, it's like a lost dog that I gave a home. I was buying watches based on my own aesthetic assessment of it. I wasn't asking anyone, is this a good watch or, yeah. or whatnot? I was just like, I can afford it. I like it. Why not? I'll buy Many it. Many people listening relate to that because that's such a valid way to be into watches, just as in how they look, as in yeah. the shape, the size, the material. Yeah, but you, you, that's the visual is a, yeah, is a major a thing that you instantly you connect with. It, yeah. Because you? you love watches so much that when you walk into Marx's house in Amsterdam, they're actually in a wall piece. Yeah. So anyway, 10 years ago, I get a phone call. I start working with Andrew uh, and- uh, We kept her watching chocolate and the rest is history. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But then it was then my eyes were opened all of a sudden to the world of actual, uh, you know, watches which were worth holding on to, let's say. So, and I, it was like a line was drawn in the sand immediately where I thought, that's it. I'm done with $200 watches and $300 watches. I cannot do it anymore. It is a waste of money. This is just silliness. So then, but then to be thinking, okay, so what's my entry watch? What's my first big boy watch? You know, what's it going to be? And it was probably, I want to say, five years of working for Time and Tide before I actually pulled the trigger on something significant. But you know what was really interesting is for, for me, is uh, as unusual to many uh, other watch enthusiasts in the world, is I'm there working for Time and Tide shooting watches all of the time. Every watch released has been basically touched by Marcus Yep, in the last 10 years. So I've seen them all, I've touched them all, and I've touched all the way up into the millions and all the way down into the hundreds. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like, well... Scratching a lot of itches. Yep, yep. And there's only been a few significant times along my journey before I decided on this shoot of Black Bay. And also, the thing which started going on in the back of my mind is uh, I've, I've got two boys, so um, I was also packaging up the idea of this purchase of the watch of like, okay, when I buy this watch, this watch I will give to my oldest son eventually. So I saw this and um, I was sold straight away and, I ca and we shot it and that was one of those rare moments in a shoot when I'm shooting with a wrist model because we, we move so fast when we shoot at watch fairs, we, you, you, we literally have the watch for five minutes or something like that. And I stopped uh, our shoot in the track after shooting this watch and I'm like, give it to me. I need to put it on my, my wrist. And th they're the rare moments where, where I know my spidey like, senses start to tingle. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to yeah. put that on. Because that's the thing, Marcus... It's Gotta want to steal it. It's, yeah. it's a little bit voyeuristic for Marcus because practically Marcus is Andrew or, or one of the Time and Tide team. Um, he's behind shooting, not touching anything. So right. he's shooting someone having all of the haptics, yeah. all of the physical sensation. So you're watching on and it is totally voyeuristic. You don't yeah. actually get to, to break through the screen himself. Yeah, that's right. You're kind of being the time and tide viewer 
in a way. Yes. So uh, so when you say you said stop it, give it to me, mm. that was actually because when I said you handled everything, you haven't. You've kind of just watched everything. Yeah, not everything. I mean, na- now I do. Now I shoot way more um, with the watches in my hands. So if you watch Time and Tide now, um, most of the time you, you'll see hands handling a watch. It's going to be me in my studio in Amsterdam. So that, And that's great. I love that because now I'm getting more tactile sensation from... And you're experience. getting different crushes because the, yeah. don't you find that like watching, it's a little bit of a digression, but it's a really important one, which is, you know, in our roles, we handle so many watches and that creates these strange connections and it definitely creates unusual connections that you would mm-hmm. never have formed if you hadn't have touched it. Do you find that? I had this with the um, uh, Zenith Revival. Yes. Zenith yeah. Revival? Look, on paper. Chrono on, Master on, Original. So... No, this is a revival. Oh, the, the revival. Yeah, I watched that. I would have just said no. That's that's ugly as hell. Yeah. On the wrist, it is just sexy. It just mm. really. But so but that's exactly it. I, yeah. I I didn't like this watch until I touched it. Until I got it on the wrist. Yep. Really odd. Yeah. Yeah. And I think. Um, so I put it on my wrist, I took photos of it, and then after Basel Word, I kept on looking at these photos, and I'm like, that's the one, I've got to get that one. So I went on the hunt for this watch, I found it in Australia. Now, I'd moved to Amsterdam by this stage, and I still remember the moment that Andrew brought the watch with him to China, and we're in the hotel room in... Uh, I don't in, remember this, I'm sorry to say. In Beijing, <laughs> or whatever. memory of this. Yeah? <laughs> you always forget your hotel room antics. Yeah, you... Yeah, no, it's rude, so it's many rude. Times, There's so many times. But it was, it was a really significant moment because I knew this, this is, this is the, the first big boy watch. So here it is. And then, so got it in my hands, put it on my wrist, and it was just, yes. Locked. Yes. Um, but the, what, what I was saying before about having a kid um, and the premeditated idea of buying this watch, having it on my wrist, having my kid grow up, seeing it on my wrist, and then eventually giving it to him. And this sense of this watch being a talisman, it's like a, a, it's a memory keeper. And so all of the photos that you have and you're wearing the watch and you just think, yeah, this is the moment I jumped out of a plane and this is the moment I kind of rafted down a river or something like that. It's all there. These are all memories. So when you hand it to your boy, whenever they look back in time, look at all these photos, see this watch on your wrist as well, and they remember it in their mind and he plays with the bezel all of the time and things like that, it just is going to hold a lot of significance. Give me goosebumps. Yeah. (laughs) But the, the reason why I wanted to do this is actually to somewhat correct a deficit that was in my life from my own father. So I've not had, my dad doesn't, uh, he, he's never handed anything down to me. He won't be handing anything down to me. He's, uh, he just hasn't collected anything kind of like that. That's just not the way we worked. And he was very always working and always away. And um, so there was, I love my dad. He's, he's awesome. So don't read me wrong here. I wanted my boy to have a different experience of his father than I had with mine. So I wanted to be able to do this for him and give this to him. And I know it's just a thing. It doesn't, it's a thing, but it's what the thing means, Mm -hmm. which is the important thing. Absolutely. So, um, so awesome. And I had this watch for, before it was stolen, I, I, I want to say seven, seven years, I think. Oh, wow. Okay. Right before it was stolen for the first time. And so it had, it was imparted memories in there for that seven years. Seven years of so, yeah. so that, and that was quite formative years of your ch- children. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. that was yep. babies. Yeah. So, and, 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 and it's awesome as well because the amount of times my boy would be sitting with me and he'd take the watch off my wrist and he'd just play with the bezel and and then, you know, I'm, te- I'm teaching him about the watch. I'm like, this is a crown. This is a bezel. This is a dial and all of this kind of stuff. This is a bracelet. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, daddy, one day you're, you're going to give this to me, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, 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 you're going to get it. You're going to get it. It's going to be great. I feel like Whoa. heartbreak's coming. Yeah. <laughs> I've just got that foreboding. So anyway, um, so I'm all happy. This is great. Um, but then I think I think the title of this episode is is also how how this uh, you know, a watch that was stolen twice and changed your life. I mean, how did it change your life by having it stolen? So look, like many people in this world, I had always struggled with alcohol. So I was a very uh, alcohol was my my escape and my release, 
and I think that, you know, when you have two new kids and it's a new life and a new world and things like that, a lot of the time, and you're working really hard all of the time, uh, you know, many of us just, we have some kind of vice mm -hmm. that we, which is a quick vice, um, and, and it's a guaranteed vice, and mine was alcohol. Wow. So I was, uh, over the years of, actually, specifically once I bought this watch, I think I really started to go down this path of, of drinking pretty hard. Um, and it was the situations that I was finding myself in with drinking was, was escalating bigger and bigger and bigger uh, of the consequences of my drinking. And this, uh, and my, but my kids are still quite young. So when they're young, and if you're hung over on a weekend or whatever, they don't really know what's going on. Yeah. They can't sort of, oh, they're just daddy's tired. You know, that's, that's what's going on. My problem was, is that it wasn't just that I was drinking a lot. It's just that I was a blackout drunk. So I would... Drink until you pass out? Well, or not, no, not, not passing out. Just, no memory. Yeah, no memory. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, and that's the difference. Blackout drunk and passing out drunk is two different things. So right. blackout is, is like if you imagine you've got a, re a recorder in your mind of all the things off. you do. It just switches off. You still function and you're still walking around talking right. to people and, you know, climbing up trees and doing stupid things, but you don't know what you're doing. Right. And then all of a sudden when I guess the alcohol level in your bloodstream comes down to a certain level, you come out of the blackout. And very often I would come out of the blackout in situations where I would be, where am I? How did I get here? And where's my shit? Oh, right? Dude. So, um, and so these, and, and my, this was a real struggle for my wife um, because I would constantly sometimes come home the next day, like literally the next day. And she would be like, w where have you been? And the problem was, is I couldn't tell her because I didn't know. It was just blacking out. And so, uh, and there was one situation which was, which should have got me to address my, my drinking, but um, it didn't. And I woke up out of a blackout and I was on a train heading away from Amsterdam and <laughs> just you're all of a sudden going, you're on a train. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like, oh. and I'm like... So you've had amnesia almost, mm -hmm. and then you're like, oof. Yeah, you're on a train. Okay, uh, where are you going? And then I'd look at, uh, into the screens in the train and see, but I don't recognise... This is me in the tube every day, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been drinking. But, but you're cognizant enough to get yeah. yourself on the train, get a ticket, uh, but, and, yeah. and sit I down. don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it, 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 there's an alternative. Wow. Yeah. So it's, I'm on the train and I, I don't even know what train line I'm on. I don't recognize any of these station names. All I know is I'm going away from Amsterdam. And I'm like, right, where's your phone? Don't know. Where's your keys? Don't know. Mm. Where's your bike? Don't know. Okay, get off the train at the next stop, swap platforms and at least get yourself back to central in Amsterdam and you got to walk your ass home. So. I had nothing with me. And anyway, I walked my ass home. Of course, my wife was very upset. And because the bike that I'd lost was a, a like this people moving bike that we took our kids to school and shopping and everything like that. And so I'd lost my bike, like 5,000 5, euro bike. Lost my brand new iPhone 13. Lost my wallet. Lost my keys. Um, not to mention my dignity. <laughs> and your phone. Yeah, and my phone. Everything's gone. So I spent the next day with my drinking buddies who came with me because they were like, dude, that's too much heat. Or I can't let you look for this stuff on your own. I spent six hours trying to find my stuff. And this is during COVID. So there wasn't a lot of people on the street, which mm. was very lucky. Anyway, after six hours of searching, my, my buddy rolls up and he's got printed out maps of Amsterdam. He's like, okay, here's the plan, man. You're going to go down here and you're going to do here. We're going to meet here. We're going to... Yeah. yeah, shout out to that guy. It's awesome. And so we eventually find the bike and in the bike is my bag, no. my phone, my wallet. But the only thing that's missing is the keys. And your dignity. And my dignity. <laughs> oh, the dignity's that. still long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So anyway, um, but I got home and um, so this is, this is a significant escalation of, of incidences of, of my, uh, 
reckless sort of behaviour. Instead of using this as the moment of like, dude, do you think this is time to, you know, do something about this? And I'm like, yes, it is time. This is the time I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to order four Apple Air Tags. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get blackout drug and still find my shit. And then I'm getting a beard, getting a hair of the dog. It's a solution. <laughs> Dude, that was my. And this is this is classic behaviour of a uh, someone with a problem. <laughs> <laughs> It's finding a technical solution yeah. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. for you to just continue doing it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 totally, Maybe. totally. So yeah, what yeah. I have, honey, I have learned from my experience. Yeah. Here's my four air tags. Yeah. I just spent a hundred pounds <laughs> to support. <laughs> yeah, shit. yeah, this won't happen again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, but you, but you still lost your dignity. You couldn't oh, have yeah, 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 yeah. 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 but, <laughs> but it's kind of hilarious. It's be a dignity. <laughs> It is kind of hilarious because when you think about it, um, oh, these situations, that, so that could have been a tragedy, but it turned actually into a drunken triumph. So this is like, yeah, you got away with it. Yeah, you got story, away with it. <laughs> like everyone's going to be like, oh, fuck. God, we walk wow. a fine line in life, don't we? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Three months. No, not even that. I reckon I want to say two months after this very moment. I am in Geneva with Andrew and we're shooting... Uh, I don't know, it was Geneva watch days or something like that? I don't know, something. We had a couple of days off and, uh, and this was always a really good thing because whenever Andrew and I got together for shoots, Andrew st at that stage still lived in Australia and I, I was in Amsterdam. So whenever we would get together, it was just great because Andrew and I are first and foremost friends, then we're work colleagues. So it... Whereas now we're first and foremost work colleagues and then... As opposed to this. <laughs> but we started as work colleagues. Interestingly, we didn't start as friends before. No, that's right. We, we met on a job. Right. So it's yeah. interesting how it's ended up. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I found myself in, in um, uh, Geneva. It's beautiful weather. Stunning weather. Like in Geneva when we the weather's... never get days off. Never. Ever. So we go out. Yeah, we had... We knew that the next day was a day off and... It was this beautiful weather. We started drinking and with no, it was just a few drinks around the lake and we were swimming in the lake. It was just beautiful. And then we stumble across this group of people who had this amazing speedboat and we were just started drinking together. And I think it was another Australian guy. And all of a sudden he's like, yeah, you want to come out on the, on the boat? And like, let's, we're going to go up here. We're going to eat at this. Like, I think we went to, um, to France across the across the lake across the lake or whatever and and to and then the booze just started going just hammering 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 and and these people were heavy drinkers as well and it was just time it was just like yeah this is great let's settle in it's going to be a good day i think my blackout began at dinner but you were part of you so you saw the blackout happening or not i did and at dinner you changed Yes. And you actually, yeah, you were... You were Is it like an alter ego changes? Oh, this was a... This is a you, you, you see, yeah. I'd never, I'd never seen this side of Marcus God, and right. it freaked me out because your whole personality changed. And actually, that night, after I went back... I won't ruin this, the, the timeline, but that night, I thought, I have to talk to Marcus tomorrow because... What happened at dinner was the first time I'd ever been insulted by you. And I was oh, like, so you become more of an aggressive, unrecognizable okay. person. All right, shit. Which which I was not aware of. No, actually, this is in, the blacking out. Yeah, this is the blacking out. Yeah. And so I actually thought in my mind that I'm I'm a great drunk. You're a happy drunk. Yeah, happy drunk. And I think most. And of he was until that point, but yeah. at dinner, it's just like a switch flicked. And you were saying things like, you, you, this guy looks like he's really confident. And you just started having a real, uh, in, in Australia, we'd say he was having a, f a fucking crack at me. Big wow. time. Mm. Out of nowhere. And it, I just never, ever in 10 years of being friends with you had I ever seen that side. And yeah. that, that night I lay awake going, I think I'm going to have to, we're going to have to have a sit down in the morning. Oh, sit down. So, so, sorry, carry on. Uh. So I don't remember any of this. And then... The next thing I remember is, is, is waking up out of my blackout and I'm on the streets of Geneva and it's, I don't know, four in the morning and it's just like, dude, where are you? Uh, I don't know, somewhere in Geneva. 
right, dude, it's time to go home. Go back to your hotel. So I go back to my hotel and I pass out by that stage. I'd just been drinking. I think we'd been drinking since about, I don't know, 11 in the morning mm. the day before. We were just, I mean, it was a great day, man. Yeah. Like, if only we just didn't fucking... Anyway. Yeah, but, <laughs> okay. but you needed that. Yeah, 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 you're the right. Thing you're is, right. Yes. You're coming to the end, of the, you're coming to the point of that story, but you needed... Life just throws these things to say, hey, there's a wake-up call. Yes. I wake up the next day. <laughs> Literally. So hungover. It was a horrible, horrible hangover. But it's like, oh, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Anyway, sort of like put it, piecing sort of stuff together. And my normal routine when I go to bed is to take my watch off and put it next to me on the bedside table or something like that. Anyway, of course, I, I you know, looking around for my watch in the morning and it's not there. And I'm like, oh, dude, what have you done? You've probably just put it down somewhere in the room. So I started going hunting through here. Because when, you, when you're a blackout drunk, you, you know that you don't know, right? So don't freak out too soon. Right? <laughs> Is this probably an explanation and someone knows? I started hunting around for the watch and it was gone. And uh, my clearly somewhere in my blackout, my watch has come off my wrist somehow i've either shown it to someone or, or or someone's taken it off my wrist or whatever i don't know but it was gone and it was in that moment it was like a laser beam into me and and it's just like you fucking idiot and it's like what have you done what have you done and it was an immediate what is it going to take for you to wake well, up was that a, a much bigger you fucking idiot than any other moment that you've had absolutely because it was the the it the was talisman. the meaning of yes. this watch. Right. It's a talisman. Yeah. yeah. It was like you have now lost the thing, the very thing that you're trying to correct in your life of what has been missing in your own journey with your own father. You've now ripped that away from your son. Now he doesn't have the watch. You don't have the watch. You just Yeah, what is it going to take? And it was in that moment I'm like I'm fucking done. I'm done. And I was just, I was in tears. It was just this awful, horrible, dark cloud, just storm, just like. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was like, I. this is so horrible that, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. And the first thing I'm thinking of is Andrew. And I'm like, this is, I'm like, okay, okay, I was so used to waking up with blackouts and you've done something stupid or whatever and you come up with a way of getting around this problem or whatever. But when it's the one big boy watch on your wrist that he knows about, you can't that all it. of a sudden I'm, I'm rolling up to the next following days of our shoot without that on my wrist, you think you're going to get that past him? No. Mm. No fucking way. And and in that moment of darkness, it's like, dude, I need someone now. Like, I need someone. And so I call Andrew. He's at the gym. And I'm like, dude, you need to come now. <laughs> and I, I was annoyed because I was 22 minutes through my 30 and I'm like, I'm not coming now. And then you, you just said you are coming now. And I was like, because I hate breaking my 30 minutes. But I could hear in your voice that this was... Uh, I would usually be like, dude, I'm nearly done. And you, but it was just, okay, I'm coming now. Yeah. So he came, we sat in the hotel hallway. hallway and he's, I still remember Andrew's all sweaty and seeing his gym clothes still. And I just fucking broke. Just. Yeah. And I just, I, I, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I shared with Andrew, obviously, which is just between me and him. But um, it, it, was, it was my moment to share with a mate my resolve of this decision to, to, to cease this behaviour and to cease alcohol, to, to, to actually acknowledge the fact that I, I did not have control and I needed to, I needed to make myself accountable. Uh, and and it, was a, it was a very, very powerful moment, very liminal moment 
and uh, it's just a little bit heavy. Mm. So take a breather. Just do you want me to tell a little bit about yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, go, 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 go. Okay, yeah, so yeah. we're sitting there in the hallway, um, and I'm looking at Marcus's wrist as he talks about this, and the pain of what Marcus was going through. It just suddenly this was the emptiest wrist in the fucking mm. universe. Like it just, even I was sitting there going, the pain of this watch not being there is actually hurting me. And, and it's and it's not it's not the physical watch. It's, it's everything tied up in it. It's well, he's meaning. just always wearing it as yeah. well. But like for me, I just thought there's just no way this can. We're not going to walk to breakfast. Like every second was reminding me of what was what had just gone on, and there was. Sometimes the emission of something is more powerful than something being there. Mm. It's like if you've got a really shit tattoo of my face on your your arm, which I think would be a good idea, by the way. I think it would look good. But like that's that's the really... end of this. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, if it, but it does sound like the Hangover, actually, at the moment, this movie. Yeah. But no, it's some the watch not being there. I could just yes. tell that this, even though I'm watching a mate go through this absolutely painful, but I could still feel potentially necessary evolution. I just was looking at that naked wrist and I was just thinking, what do, what do we do? How do we, how do I put, I, I was obsessed with what I put there. And this is where you come into the story. I put a Bamford on your wrist, mm -hmm. the Bamford G-Shock, because it was the only, I think I only had one other watch with me. I, I, I travel hey, with you. You kept this really quiet because, yeah. I mean, like this is. This is between us. But I, I, we, we broke from that discussion, which will forever stay between us. And then I went back to my room and I, I got the watch and uh, we met downstairs um, shortly after. And I said, wear this because mm. this is a symbol that, you know, a friendship. Yeah. That's epic, man. Now you take it back. The significance of this and this place here is that this happened two days before we shot season one. <laughs> oh, I no forgot way. about that. Far. I forgot about that. No, well, maybe it wasn't two days. It was about maybe four days. It was on the same trip. It was yeah. on the same trip. So Holy shit. I had yep. completely forgotten that. So we still had... Yeah, I remember because you had the G-Shock on your wrist. I was like, oh, you're, you're, you're already part of the family. That, that's my G-Shock. So yeah. when we were shooting season one... Holy shit. I was in that little corner over there sitting on a fucking road case with an aching back, with this dark cloud on me, listening to these guys talk about watches and throwing them around and happy, 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 joy, 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 joy. And just the whole time just going, you're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot. Dude. What have you done? What have you done? You're a fucking idiot. And it, so it was really, I just had to hold it together and get through and and I even remember in season one, that was at one stage, I think Adrian was talking about a Tudor Black Bay and things like that. And I just knew, I'm like, dude, Adrian, if I had busted, this, I'm if sorry. I had, no, but if I had this on my wrist, I would be handing it to him now and he'd be having it on the table and it'd be just like, yeah. Anyway. So when he's sitting there like that, I'm sitting here thinking, I can't believe this guy is here. I can't believe this is still going on. And I can't believe that you still brought energy to that first season. But like, it's, it's not did you even there. notice? It's setting this shit up. Oh, takes the pressure! Literally a day, two days to just get the cameras done. And it's it's not easy work. It's you, you have to. It's technical. It's hard. It's it's a pain. And to do it's that, a lot in, of brain power too. A lot, like, of, a lot of brain power. Incredibly it's, complicated. Yeah, it is. There's so many wires. It's the whole thing is just technical. So so to to just be a trooper to get through that is, is fucking. But also yeah. to change it from a podcast to a video, <laughs> yeah. you know, because it was meant to be like a simple podcast with a bit of video on the side. And headphones. One, camera. I, one camera. One camera. That, and you were like, no, 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 I'm doing it. it to go through that and oh, wow. to, to step us all up this far forward, it, that's... Um, yeah. Shit. Shake us balls. So I, I, I did get through that, but then I was faced with the question of like, okay, so what are you going to do about this? Do, you know, and um, it, it was like, okay... Uh, I think even Andrew suggested, you know, like, dude, maybe it just, maybe the next watch you should buy should it, it should be something else. You know, maybe that was, that's part of your story. And uh, I, I thought it over, thought it over, thought it over. I could not get over this watch. 
there was too much meaning in it. And so I, I was like, no, I have to get it again. Even though it, was, it wouldn't be the same physical watch, it, it just, it's what it means, right? And, and it's what my boy understands. So, start of season two. <laughs> oh, I bought the watch again. And so when I arrived here yeah. at the Hive, which is the Range Rover season, all those funny bits yeah, of the star, yeah, yeah. the big production season. All of a sudden, the first, my first piece of action walking here into the hive was, uh, okay, where's my watch? Did you pick it up from here? Yeah. yeah. So, um, you, yeah, I remember. Cause, yeah, because yeah, I, bu I bought it from someone in London. Yeah. And um, uh, so it, it had been delivered here and it was like, dude, put it on the wrist. And it was just like, woo, we're home, man, we're home. Back. And no drink zero like after that that seminal moment you've that zero and now 100 percent. so after that moment of, of of talking to andrew and resolving oh yeah i should I and should family finish, and I should oh, finish that's this story. critical that's this is that my critical there's yeah, a lot that, of people on the edge of their seats right now that's yeah. right i just at that moment when i decided this is the line in the sand i will change my life as soon as i got back to amsterdam i started going to aa wow and i went there religiously I went through the steps and I was listening to so many talks with, you know, people's stories of, of, of their recovery through through alcohol. And fortunately for me, uh, listening to my story, thinking, man, my story's pretty tame <laughs> compared really? to a lot of people. Well, Dude, you you wanna, haven't lost as much. Holy shit. If you want to hear dark, a dark place, go go on a YouTube and type in AA talks and things like that. And you are going to hear people's stories. But the beautiful part about it is, is all of these really dark places end in redemption and it's beautiful so i did that and i and i committed to it and, and it's funny I, i've I, here's some pictures of my little tokens i should have brought my tokens with me but i've got my tokens and they mean a lot and so it's been now i think one year and three months okay. that i've been sober and my whole life has changed Everything about like no more blackouts, no more weekends just being hung over every weekend. Because I was playing the silly game of like, okay, well, maybe if you just don't drink during the week and then just you can have a drink on the weekend. But the, my thing was, is I'd, I'd be like, dude, you've been really good. You haven't drunk during the week. It's Friday afternoon. Let's go, let's do. Dude, let's go nuts. So if, if I was drinking, I was on. It was on. It was time and it was time to get sideways. So that significantly stopped that behavior. And all of a sudden, all of these opportunities started to open up. And about I think time, as, as that started and we exploded and things like that, I've got all of this energy and all of this creativity, which is now in me, which is like, whoa, what's going on? And, and so much more focus and concentration and, and everything. And so everything about the creative part of me has upped so much. I, it, and I can't say that I, I, I don't, I do miss it. I, I miss the, the drinking and I miss, I do miss going out with mates and, and having this kind of like automatic, like, yeah, we're going out drinking and, it, and it's, it's quite turnkey and whatever. So the, the, it's not that I don't miss that, but I know and have seen the evidence of how it's changed my life that my resolve Yes, I miss it, but I like this new life better and it's worth the sacrifice. And, and as my kids are growing older and they're getting more aware of me and my behavior, I'm also being so much more aware of like, dude, they're watching every move of what you do. Mm. What are you showing them? What are you teaching them? And so it's more important to me to, to be a good role model. And now what they're saying is Marcus, the yoga animal <laughs> did you do it what were you doing yesterday in the green room you're yeah. like on your head here's a little here's a little uh this is me yesterday that's marcus in the green room out the back doing just, do just a lazy headstand for like five minutes so the animal is real uh <laughs> so so we um uh yeah so i get this watch and, and so, as I said, because I'd addressed my life and all of these, put it all these changes and, you know, discussing with my wife and cheap as man, my wife was so happy to, 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 for me to arrive at this point, just makes it, yeah, it just changes everything. 
So I've got this watch up until July of this year, which is only, what, a few months ago, two months ago. This is the next talisman. This is the so next this... talisman, right? So it's, it's been... This is a... still last month. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, I was then in Italy and we, I was there on a family holiday, which was great. It was about five hours before we were about to, due to fly back and we, we needed to eat. And so we pulled over somewhere and we were going to go eat at this restaurant and the, there was no room at the restaurant. We were only away from the car for about 10 minutes, came back. The back window of the car was smashed and the seats were all down and they took everything. Now, now, and that's so my wife's laptop, her, her iPad, kids all our stuff. clothes, yeah. all the kids' stuff, and and passports, everything. Jeez, right? So, and now I didn't remember at the time that my watch was in my belongings. I so here's here's the little little kicker, and this involves Adrian. <laughs> oh, what? 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 Adrian's in his story. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. So. <laughs> Um, I had always liked um, uh, the Buck and Jack uh, NATO straps, which everyone should consider for, yeah. So anyway, I, but I, I had uh, got a, a Buck and Jack NATO strap only just prior to this trip. And I'd put my watch on this NATO. That's strap. what the thieves wanted, wasn't it? They, they didn't. Want, <laughs> they came they, with the passports. They left the head. They, they left the head behind. Yeah, no, passports, laptops. They wanted a box of Jack. But why weren't you wearing it? <laughs> yeah, this is, here's the story. Yeah. Here's the story. I bought two watches on my holiday. One of which was a, a Basel, um, which Sydney diver. Sydney diver. Yep. And um, that was on a rubber strap. And for some reason, like, the, and the, the water in Italy is super salty in the sea. And we were swimming all day. And I don't know, for some reason, I'm like, ah, I just don't want any salt damage to this NATO strap. So I'll put that one in the bag and the Bowsel's on a rubber strap. I'll wear the Bowsel to swim in, right? There's nothing better to swim in than a NATO strap. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, mean, I love where your brain goes. It's like, it's, it's like you know, taking off a dive watch and putting it by the mark. pool. It's like, it's like, don't worry. It's like, hey, I'm, go I'm going to go into a pool. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. NATO strap dried. You'll, you'll get salt marks, oh but that, gosh. you just soak it in. in and you just water. talk to him. If only, if only Adrian was there to advise me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, he was not. Adrian, so yeah. I did that and I, and I had this bells on my wrist and even when the things were stolen, I, it didn't even even Jerry to me and I'm, I'm, my wife is distraught. She's just so upset. We race to the local police station. We're doing the police report and she's in tears and she, we're just saying, okay, well, we've got to list are, all of the kids stuff. Kids are that, worried as well. They're worried and even the kids, so they're listening to us to say, okay, mommy, we're, we're reporting to the police. She's lost her iPad and her MacBook and, 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 I'd lost a drone and an action camera. Fortunately, I wasn't there on a work trip, so I had very minimal kind of toys. But I'm thinking, that's all right, I'm insured, it's fine. You know, shit happens, it'll be okay. Um, and it wasn't until uh, when we were listing these things uh, with the police that all of a sudden it was like, ding! It's happened again. <laughs> Guess what? Oh my God. Your tutor was in your bathroom bag, which is in the bag they took. And I'm just like, you are fucking kidding. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Twice. And it was this moment of like, oh, what does this mean? What does it mean? Does this mean, is this like a curse? Yeah, it's a cursed watch. Yeah. Or did it bring you back to a dark place or did it make you, did you kind of, because this is kind of, it could be the thing that tipped you or, and it not because you said you're clean, but it, yeah. but was it, because yeah. I, I would instantly be like, frick, it's it back to that. Yeah. It's the watch. It, the, the first memories of sitting with Andrew by the thing. 100%, it, all of this goes through my head, all of it. And, and, and again, with this moment of like, what does this mean? What are you going to do about this? Does this, you know, um, and uh, to be honest, I didn't really have an answer f for what this means or what I'm going to do about it in that moment. But it, it was like, holy shit, man, why weren't you wearing that watch when you were swimming? Of course, I've just explained why. Um, but I didn't have what was really, really, it was funny because I did, I, uh, there, was, there was dark feelings, but there was also good feelings of like, 
isn't a relief that this thing has been stolen for the second time, but not because you are a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, the, the that's, context that's is quite completely a, yeah, different. But that's, oh, and, yeah, that's, yeah. and this is kind of, it's a story for the family as well. And, yeah. you know. Because yes. who can prepare sure against like, the back windscreen being smashed? Yeah. yeah. That is brutal. But also, it wasn't on display. It, it, no, the watch wasn't yeah. the target. It was, it was a bag. Boot. It was a smash and grab. That was all it was. That's it. That's it. It's exactly right. So they just took everything. And it, so it, it doesn't only happen in England. It happens in Italy when you're on holiday. Yeah, dude, dude. I mean... Um, so then I come back from this moment and, and like I said, this is only July, right? And now we're, this is August, end of August. Yeah. So it was, it, was, it was early July. So two months ago that this happened. Season four of, eight, of our About Even Time is happening right now. And I was faced with the decision of, Kate, okay, dude, is it a curse watch? Do you move on? Mm. Or are you going to get it again? And yeah, so I have made a decision. You bought it again. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. Are, are you, you're individually propping up the Swiss watch industry. <laughs> so yeah, this is literally. You haven't seen this. Yet. I've never seen this. No, no. So. Um, oh my god. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Third time's a charm. <laughs> I tell you, if if this anything happens to this fucking watch. You, that's done, okay? You Third need to, time. You need to inscribe your, your phone number on the back or something. Do you know what? Yeah, it, but, and actually, I will say this. I, I do have an idea for the, the, the case back um, for this and an inscription that I want to put on it. And maybe I want to talk to George about getting yeah, it done. the guys can do it upstairs. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, here we go. Can you, can you share that idea? Uh, I, I'm, I'm still toying with with what is it I, I had an idea for the first time around and it was it was going to be like uh some something about a second ch- everyone gets a second chance <laughs> and because it's like a third I'm you like, should do that, that and scrub it out everyone gets a third chance <laughs> <laughs> like, cool. that would actually it's be really great. funny <laughs> And then you could always scrub it out, and make it fall. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is no, this, this is it. <laughs> this is the one. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Ready? Here we go. Oh, I'm gonna do it this second. <gasps> Look, it's back. It's back. It's back. The, the baby, I'm back. But you got, you got on the strap <laughs> rather than a bracelet or stuff. Yes. No. Look. Okay. Here's here's the kicker. Same, same, but different. Here's the kicker, and this was lucky for me, and thanks to Adrian. Okay. Because it was on the NATO strap, I had taken it off the bracelet in Amsterdam. Brilliant. So, yeah. I have. So guys, this is a benefit of buying a Bark and Jack NATO strap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> so, I still have the bracelet. Oh, so, is a little bit. Have you got the Oh, you got Yes, the I've got Sweet, the end. everything. I've actually got another set of end links <laughs> <laughs> as well. So, um, I have this. And so, this allowed me to make this third purchase Dang. on the strap, which saved me a bit of money, which is really good, but... But it's also really let, let, nice let, on the let strap. Let me give it a bit of a... So, you don't feel like this is some sort of cursed watch? You, you feel like this is still the one that you're going to... No, this is the talisman. This is the talisman. Yeah. I think this is probably always going to be the most important watch in my collection. So, I'm going to pull it off and we're going to put it back on the where it, where it last remained. I like that strap. Where's that strap from? Yeah. This is a Buck and Jack. Nylon 2.0. Oh, okay. I'd say Bond or will I get sued up to Bond? You, you, you know what sort of strap. Yeah, but look, it's just, it, you know what time it, it is. really is pretty, pretty. Um, get it on the wrist, man. Get it I, I am going to get, gonna get it on the wrist, okay? Maybe just. I love it on that strap. Yeah. Really love it on that. Yeah. I love that strap. I love also the gold on that strap as well. Yeah, it really yeah, does. It, 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 it suits it perfectly. It really does. Ma- Ma- gold Ma- Ma- Marcus, two times. Yeah, yeah Ma- Marcus sent me a photograph of it and I'd did never you, was, thought of Did it. the other one have gold on it? Yeah. I didn't notice that. Yeah. I mean, like, gone. That is now it. Now you've got a red shot. He's back. Come on. Da, 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 baby, I'm back. He is da, back. Da, 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 da. Oh, so, holy smokes, man. Look, it's just... How's it feel on your wrist? So you. It really should be called the Marcus. Yes, yes. From (laughs) from here and in, let's call this watch the Marcus. The Kermit, the Hulk, and the Marcus. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, like yeah, because when I look at this, it just there's just it's like a a memory zinger. It's just like all of these things that I've done with this on my wrist. So look, really, yeah. Do you want to know what's funny though, Marcus? What? The story isn't doesn't end here. So we, we, we believe this watch is cursed. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? 
Yeah. Do you want to open that drawer just there? All right. <laughs> this is like. Fuck, now I'm really nervous. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? What? What? Look, when I said we didn't pre-talk the story, we knew enough about the story for Adrian, George and I to have our own discussion. And we felt that <laughs> it was time to move on. And the people who made this happen, like, fucking moved the world to make yeah. this happen. Yeah. It was quite... It so was we, awesome. We, <laughs> holy shit! So we feel it's time for a new chapter. Fuck. And maybe, because two children, there is now oh, a new... Yeah, come on! <laughs> Can you guess which one it is? <laughs> oh. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Oh, dude, dude, dude. Oh, come on, man. Um. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Try it on. We, we've had it sized, but obviously we, we can get George's chaps to, to make it fit better if it doesn't. <laughs> it's your watch, man. Let's get this little plastic. Always Is it just a I weed? always love taking the plastic off on this watch. Oh, man. Oh, it needs a little bit of tightening up. Yeah, but... So it's a Pelagos 39. Mm. Can you remember we spoke about this watch when, when it was launched? And I, I want to say something here, brief, and I think I speak for all of us when I say that in addition to the curse that we're saving you from, uh, you work so hard on about mm. every time. Yeah. You put in hours that are just insane. Somehow you squeeze 26 hours out of the day when it's a thing time day. And we appreciate it so much. And you deserve this, man. 100%. Man. It's also about suffering time that you had another talisman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say is that, you know, because you've got two kids, now this is the yeah. thing, okay? Man. So side by side. Dude. Felix dude, and Max. Dude, this is just... And they're, they're both so you. Oh, dude. Yeah. Do you know... They're both do, so you. Do you know, man, like, this is the thing. When um, I was making this decision with with what to do when it was stolen for the first time, Tudor released this and we shot it mm. within yes. hours of its release and I put it on and I was even thinking, yeah, maybe it's this one next. But actually the more and but the more I thought about it, the more it's just like, no, it has to be this one. But that was literally on my trigger clock. <laughs> Fuck me. Thank you so much, guys. Like this means Dude. so much to me. Like really, really, this this means a lot. Ah, I'm out. <laughs> you deserve it, man. Shit. So what a way to bring out the fourth, yeah. the fifth Beatle. Um, Marcus is someone that the the people that, that watch everything we do is going to be familiar with. But for those that aren't familiar with it, Marcus is the creative director. Marcus is the guy that that drives us and shoots to, to be our best. He's the guy that makes a, a, a sort of an Oppenheimer type, you know, beautiful mind setup happen every single time. And man, you just grind like a motherfucker. And and yeah, you 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 have this what feels like a limitless bucket of energy when when shit needs to get done you make it happen even when we're we're flagging and and we're done it's like no we're gonna yeah. just one more time go again go again yeah, yeah. and look 
the magic. But watches speak louder than compliments, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> this one is screaming at me. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning. So that, that is a sign of, uh, you know, that isn't about a thing time talisman for you as well. And maybe maybe we can inspire yeah, that on the I back. think so. It's a better thing time. I, yeah, yeah dude. GB. <laughs> oh, boy, is this, this yeah. is just great. Yeah, properly epic. And look, you know, this is the community season and you have been on this journey with us. When Marcus is talking about many of these points in time, you can cast your own mind back. Like this has been happening in parallel with your own life. And I know that... Um, the episodes that have caused the most uh, connection with you have been our, our deepest and darkest. You know, Adrian was very brave in an episode. We've all talked about moments that are personal and, you know, you share in the comments and look, if this has triggered you in some way, because this has been some heavy content and this is not your garden variety uh, watch YouTube episode, mm -hmm. but if you have been triggered in any way, we'll put some links in the comments to places where you can seek help. Um, Mark will be in the yeah. comments. Uh, you're not going to be able to counsel everyone because <laughs> I know that, especially with Australia, there's a fair few alcoholics out there. Hi, Aussies. Um, I'm one of the recovering ones. <laughs> um, we are all so grateful to you for sharing your personal stuff with us in the same way. And I'm certainly grateful to you, man, for Thank being you. unbelievably brave today. And again, I just know how many people this is going to help. And I, I feel like we've all Definitely. been at the, we've witnessed something special today. Um, yeah. And it just gives me enormous pleasure to see that on your wrist and to see that your two sons can't claim that you've got favouritism. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. It's about thank a big you. time. We, we cut this one, but Love thank you. you. We'll see you on the next one.